Hi, it's uh, Joe Mazum, Director of Exploration Insights at the uh, Metal Investment Forum in Vancouver. And with me right now from Trilogy Metals, I got the VP of Corporate Development, Patrick Donnelly. Patrick. Joe. How's it going? Good. Thanks for having me on. Hey, uh, so Trilogy Metals, you've got a big district scale land package up in the Ambler District of, uh, what is it, uh, West Central uh, Alaska? Yes. And uh, you've got two big projects that you're working on, one at a very advanced stage, uh, which is Arctic, another one that's coming up, Bornite. Yes. And a big joint venture with South 32. So w what's happening right now with respect to uh, all the projects and your, your dealings with South 32? Yeah, we just uh, we just finished our, our summer program. It was an $18.2 million uh, summer uh, exploration program. These are U.S. dollars. And uh, specifically, uh, we spent $9.2 million at Bornite, drilling 10 holes in fill, and expansion drilling. And then uh, we spent about another $6 million at Arctic getting it ready for permitting and for feasibility study. And then we also did a, a regional exploration program, a $2 million regional exploration program focusing on uh, uh, the Sunshine Deposit, which is a satellite deposit. And uh, hopefully we'll have results uh, for that soon. So um, yeah, so it was a big summer for us and we expect to have drilling results uh, coming out uh, very soon. So, I mean, for our audience that might not know the difference between the projects, geologically sure. they're different, but also in terms of stage of development, they're yeah. very different. Well, it's really interesting. Uh, Arctic is a volcanic genic massive sulfide deposit. Um, very Which similar. tend to happen in clusters. There's Absolutely. Small tonnage, high grade sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, much like what you see at the Flim Flon uh, or up in the Iberian Pyrite Belt, uh, they tend to occur in clusters. And uh, Arctic is one of probably dozens of, of uh, deposits we have on the belt, but Arctic's the most advanced. Uh, Born is a carbonate replacement style deposit, much what you see in, in the African copper belt. And what's interesting about Arctic and Bornite, they're only 20 miles apart and they're a similar geologic age. So, um, so it's very, very intriguing. We think they're related, even though the, the metallurgy and the mineralogy are different, they're similar age. Uh, they're both Devonian and uh, located very close to each other. So. That indicates it's a very, very large system, and, uh, and that's why uh, South 32 is very, very intrigued by by this uh, these properties. But uh, Bornite is still resource stage, but but Correct. right now you're advancing the Arctic project to a feasibility stage. Yeah, we're moving both projects along. Arctic, uh, like I said, uh, in 2018 we put out a pre-feasibility study. Uh, it was off the charts. It was a uh, net present value of 1.4 billion dollars. Cash costs of 15 cents a pound after byproduct credits. It's going to produce 160 million pounds of copper, 200 million pounds of zinc, uh, about 3 million ounces of silver, and about 50,000, 30,000 ounces of gold. And so we're moving that. Uh, we're going to have a feasibility study out early next year, and we'll start permitting Arctic. Uh, Bornite's a couple of years behind. It's at the resource level. Uh, we've been drilling it pretty hard the last couple of years. We just drilled another 10 holes in there. And uh, so we're moving that towards a PEA uh, study, preliminary economic assessment study, and uh, if you know, and, and probably more drilling as we go forward. So besides the drilling and the technical studies, you've got two other major catalysts coming up sure. in the next six months, right? Yes. So the the Ambler Mineral Belt, it it's it's like a lot of projects. It's been around for a long time. It was discovered in the late 1950s, and the issue hasn't been whether it's economic or not. Um, it's up in north, north central Alaska, Alaska, and the issue has always been infrastructure. And um, so we've been working really hard with the uh, United States Bureau of Land Management and the Alaska Industrial Development Export Authority to get a 211 mile road permitted. And it's been a long time coming, but now uh, just last week um, the, the BLM uh, issued the uh, draft environmental impact assessment for the road. And so now we're into the comment period, which is 45 days. That'll be completed uh, uh, October 15th. And we're expecting the final EIS probably by the end of November and the rest of the permits by the end of the year. So this is a monumental catalyst for the company. Um, it unlocks the entire jurisdiction. And I just want to highlight that we have a tremendous support from the governor. The governor of Alaska has been adamant uh, about getting this road in there. Uh, tremendous support from the state. And most There's importantly, been a historical right of way on that road from decades, right? Yeah, and, and thanks for pointing that out. In 1979, uh, Jimmy Carter passed the uh, Alaska National Interest Conservation Act. And what that did was it broke up Alaska into state, federal, 
and indigenous lands. And within that law, uh, there's a section stating that there shall be a transportation corridor from the Ambler Mining District to the Dalton Highway. So that was enshrined in a law. And so that, that makes things a lot easier. So yes, there's, there's, there's been a road penciled in for a long time, and uh, it's been a long time coming. We've been at this for about five or six years now. And as I said before, um, we're, we're, by the end of this year, that whole process should be completed and the permits should be in place for the road. And the next step is for uh, the government to negotiate the right of ways and arrange financing uh, for the road. And uh, like I said, that's going to be a big, big catalyst for the company. And so that record decision you're anticipating by the latter part of this year or early part end of, of the year? End of the year. End of the year. There's always the possibility of slippage, but uh, you know how governments work sometimes. But uh, it's not if, but it's when. And, and, and it will, we're, we're fairly confident it'll be end of this year. Okay, so, but at the end of January, there is a catalyst. Another big catalyst. To... Yeah, absolutely. So in uh, 2017, we signed a option agreement with South 32. It's uh, a, a diversified base metal company out of Australia. They've got a $10 billion market cap. They were spun out of BHP Billiton in 2017. Um, and the agreement is they, haven't, they had to put in uh, $30 million into our projects uh, to maintain the option. They've done that now. And now they have until the end of January to exercise the option. If they exercise the option, they get a 50% interest in our assets, but they got to put $150 million US into the joint venture. So we're moving pretty hard on that right now. Um, they make a decision, they'll make a decision by the end of the year, and then they have to, uh, but they have until the end of January of next year to make the final decision. So we're fairly optimistic that this is going to happen. And uh, it'll, again, it'll, um, and verify and, and, and validate the fact that we own a world-class mining jurisdiction. Okay, and underlying this, just recently, this week, uh, we had the resignation of your CEO, yeah. one of the founders of the company. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Rick Van Neuenheiser, who, uh, you know, he's a, he's a close friend and, and mentor of mine, and, you know, he's been the big driver of this thing. You know, he founded this company and, uh, you know, we wouldn't be where we are with the road and, and South 32 and, and the unlocking of the value of the Ambler, Ambler District. But uh, uh, that being said, um, you know, we brought in Jim Gowans to be the interim CEO. And, and this guy is a rock star. Uh, uh, he was the president and CEO of, uh, of Arizona Mining, which was last year uh, acquired by uh, South 32 for $1.6 billion, which is ironically, uh, South 32 is also the company we have the option for the JV for. Uh, Jim also has incredible uh, experience in Alaska. He uh, uh, did the feasibility study and, and constructed and built and operated the, uh, the Red Dog Mine, which is near our project. And, and the Red Dog Mine is the second or third largest zinc mine in the world. So, you know, the good news, you know, it's sad that Rick had to leave. And, but that being said, the company's in really, really good hands uh, with someone who, uh, who's done this before and, and has a, a, probably one of the best track records in the industry. So. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, again, with all these catalysts and great leadership and great people, uh, I'm looking forward to the future for this company. All right. Well, Patrick, thanks for showing up. Great. Thank you, Joe. It's Joe Mazumdar, uh, Exploration Insights uh, from the AE Metals Investment Forum in Vancouver. Thank you very much.